quick question. If you were suddenly gone and your family could recover your Bitcoin seed phrase, would they be able to recover your Bitcoin? Most of you would say yes, and most of you would be wrong. A few years ago, I learned this the hard way. I needed to restore a wallet. I had the right seed phrase. I typed it in correctly, and I'm looking at a wallet with a zero Bitcoin balance. Initiate full panic, DEFCON 1. It was the longest 20 minutes of my life before I figured out what was wrong. After I changed my underwear, I realized it wasn't the seed phrase that was the problem. It was something called a derivation path. And I bet most of you that are watching this have no idea which one you're using or what the hell a derivation path even is. Here's the problem. If you can't recover your own Bitcoin, you're not actually in control of it. And if you can't explain to your family how to recover the Bitcoin, you're setting them up to think it's lost forever, just like I did for 20 minutes. So let's fix that gap in your Bitcoin knowledge base right now. This could be the most important Bitcoin lesson you'll watch all year. So what exactly is a derivation path? And more importantly, when do you need to even care about it? Think of it like this. Your seed phrase is like the master key to a massive apartment building with billions of apartments. That's a big one. But that building has different floors, different hallways, different apartments with different mailboxes. The derivation path is just the specific instructions for which apartment you're actually trying to get to. It's literally just floor 84, hallway zero, apartment two, room zero, mailbox one, for example. And that's it. When you look at the derivation path, it looks like this. M forward slash 84 prime forward slash zero prime forward slash zero prime forward slash zero forward slash zero. That looks like a bunch of gibberish and some silly code, right? But it's really just an address or directions. The whole system follows what is called BIP32 and BIP44. Those are Bitcoin improvement proposals that standardized how wallets derive addresses from C phrases. You don't need to memorize all these technical standards, but those are the terms to search for if you want to go down the rabbit hole. You might notice some of the numbers have a little apostrophe next to them or a prime, like the 84 and a couple of the zeros, but other numbers don't. That apostrophe means that it's hardened. It's a security feature. Those hardened positions require your private key to work with them, which adds an extra layer of protection to your wallet. The last two numbers don't have any apostrophes or primes with next to them because your wallet needs to generate new addresses without constantly referencing your private key. Just know that those little apostrophes are part of the security design of a derivation path. Okay, so let's break down the derivation path step by step. The first part is the M and it stands for master or master key. That's the master private key that gets generated from your seed phrase that controls the whole wallet. And each number after that is turn by turn directions to a specific apartment where your bags of Bitcoin are stored. Now here's where things get practical. The first number in the sequence after the M, like 44, 48, 49, 45, 84, 86, is telling you what type of Bitcoin address you're creating. This is super important because different address types store Bitcoin in different ways. And each type represents an entirely different wallet. Same seed phrase, different wallet. Legacy addresses start with the number one and they use a derivation path with the number 44 in it. So M44. Nested SegWit addresses, it's a different type of address, start with the number three. Those use a derivation path that starts with M49. Native SegWit starts with BC1Q and that uses M84. And the latest taproot addresses start with BC1P, but use the derivation path M forward slash 86. Now, if you're using multi-sig wallets where you need multiple signatures combined to sign a transaction to spend your Bitcoin, those typically use M forward slash 48. Different path, different purpose. All right, the second number is the coin type. Hang in there and stay with me. For Bitcoin, it's super easy. This number is always zero. If you were using the same seed phrase for other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum or Litecoin or some other BIP44 supported coin, they would use a different number in this place. But for Bitcoin, 
it's always zero. The third number in the sequence is your account number. Almost everyone just leaves this at zero, which is the very first account in that wallet. You can have multiple accounts from the same seed phrase if you wanna separate funds for different purposes, but most people don't get into that complexity in terms of setting up a wallet. And the fourth number determines if it's an external address that you share with others, a public address that you say, send the Bitcoin here, or an internal wallet address that accepts the change from a transaction. Zero means an external address. These are addresses you give people to send Bitcoin to. And one means an internal change address. And your wallet handles these automatically. And that final number, that's your specific address index number. Zero is your first address. One is the second address. Two is your third address. Your wallet automatically generates new addresses, or it should, for privacy purposes but they all come from the same seed phrase using these incremental numbers. Now, just an aside, if you wanna get technical, each of these positions in this derivation path is actually called an index. So you've got the purpose index, like 84, 86. You've got the coin type index. You've got the account index, the change index, and the address index. But you don't need to use that terminology unless you're at a mixer at a Bitcoin conference or something and trying to show people you know what you're talking about. So why do we have all these different type of wallets? Because Bitcoin has evolved a little bit since 2009. Legacy addresses were the original, hence the name. They work everywhere, but their fees are quite a bit higher. Multisig, that could be an entirely separate video, was introduced in 2012. It really became useful in 2014 when the M forward slash 45 derivation path was introduced and got more modern updates in 2019 with the M forward slash 48 Bitcoin standard. SegWit addresses like nested SegWit and native SegWit were created to make transactions smaller and cheaper. And Taproot, which is the newest type of address, added better privacy and even lower fees for certain transactions. Here's the problem that all of this diversity creates. If you set up a wallet using a native SegWit address or derivation path, which is M-84, M forward slash 84, but then you try to recover that wallet somewhere else, and that wallet that you're using to recover defaults to an M44 or legacy derivation path, you're gonna see a zero balance. Your Bitcoin isn't gone, you're just looking in the wrong apartment. Let's walk through some real life examples that could actually happen. Scenario one, the heart attack migration. You decide to upgrade your security setup, moving from a generic ledger to a Bitcoin only cold card. You diligently enter your 24-word seed phrase, confident that your funds are perfectly safe. You check the balance on the wallet, and zero. Panic sets in. Did you write those words down wrong? Was your seed phrase compromised? No. Your ledger was using the native SegWit derivation path, which is M-84, but for some reason the cold card defaulted to the legacy derivation path, M-44. Your money is sitting right there, invisible, because your device is looking down the wrong path. Scenario two, and this one happened to me in real life. Shortly after Taproot came out, I set up a cold wallet using the newest derivation path, Taproot. I didn't really understand the difference at the time or what a derivation path even was. Months later, I was running a drill with my wife. No, not that kind of drill. <laughs> and bragging about how smart I am to use a cold wallet and wanted to show her how to recover the funds in case something should happen to me. I confidently enter my seed phrase, and voila, I'm staring at a zero balance. In front of my wife, I'm thinking, did I write down the wrong words? Did someone steal it? Where's the Bitcoin? And my wife is like, you better find that. I must have entered the seed phrase wrong, so I re-enter the seed phrase figuring, no problem, this will fix it. Nope. It took about 20, 30 minutes of panic and Google, a bunch of Google searches before I realized I needed to try a different derivation path. And the wallet I was using defaulted to native SegWit. Remember, I used Taproot. I thought I was being modern and special, setting up a Taproot wallet. So I found the Bitcoin. Again, it was there the whole time, but it was a very humbling experience. Now, the third scenario is a potential inheritance scenario. Here's the situation. You're a power user, like all of you are. To keep your KYC Bitcoin separate from your non-KYC Bitcoin, you use the account feature, that one little 
index number that we talked about for accounts on your hardware wallet. Your KYC coins are on account zero, the standard default account, but your life savings are in the first account after that, or account one. And those are the non-KYC Bitcoin that you held. And you left your seed phrase to your family, but you forgot to explain to them that you're using different accounts. Here's the crisis. Your heirs are able to restore the Bitcoin wallet to a software application, and they find all your KYC Bitcoin in account zero and move that out into a different wallet. But they're like, I thought he had more Bitcoin. Where did it go? So reset everything, restore the wallet, try it again. Account zero is empty, and account one has all your Bitcoin. But the balance on the application says zero. So your heirs find a technical expert to help them recover the funds. Maybe not so expert. The expert helps them restore the account to a wallet. The wallet balance says zero again. The expert tells your family that the wallet is empty, not realizing that there were other accounts on the wallet holding more Bitcoin. The Bitcoin was just sitting there one integer away. But without the derivation path or the account number specifically written down, finding it is like guessing a PIN number. Your heirs might abandon the empty seed phrase, leaving millions of dollars on the table, blockchain in this case, and their bank accounts completely empty. So how do you actually use this knowledge? What do you need to do differently? First, when you set up a new wallet, you don't just record your seed phrase, but you need to record what address type you're using. I keep a simple note, and you can use the words native segwit or taproot or whatever you want, but for me, just m forward slash 84 for native segwit or m forward slash 86 for taproot, or you can just put 84, 86. That's it. Someone will figure that out. It takes two seconds, and it could save a lot of heartache later. And if you're serious about passing Bitcoin onto your family someday, this becomes even more critical. Your spouse and kids won't know the difference between legacy, native segwit, and taproot. Just ask them at dinner tonight. They'll have your seed phrase, but no idea which derivation path to follow. Writing down that M84 or native segwit next to the seed phrase could be the difference between them recovering all your funds or thinking the, so the wallet is empty. Some people get a little paranoid about writing this down. Isn't that a security risk? No, it's not. The derivation path without the seed phrase is completely useless. And if they've got your seed phrase, it's really just a matter of time before they can try all the derivation paths, provided they're an expert. So this would save the bad guys a few minutes or a few hours if they know what they're doing. And if they don't know what they're doing and you record the derivation path with your seed phrase, they won't understand that 84 means native segwit. The second thing you can do is before you commit to a new wallet, check the derivation paths it supports. Now, most wallets support all of the derivation paths, but Taproot is still being propagated through the Bitcoin community. It's very slow to change. Most modern wallets give you a choice of a derivation path to use when you set up the wallet, but some older, simpler wallets might lock you into a single path. If you're using a wallet that only supports the M44 legacy derivation path, you're going to have higher fees. That might be fine for long-term cold storage that you're not moving around, but it's good to know as well. And third, and this is important, if you're recovering a wallet and you see a zero balance, but you know you had Bitcoin in there, please don't panic. Look for settings, advanced options, or derivation path options. One of the other derivation paths available will show your Bitcoin if you have the seed phrase correct. Most good wallets like Sparrow Wallet make this a really easy process. When you're setting up a new wallet or restoring one, there's a dropdown where you can specify the script type or derivation path. Same thing. The Sparrow Wallet is particularly good about this. It shows you the standard options in a dropdown that are clearly labeled legacy, nested segwit, native segwit, or taproot. Mobile wallets are much trickier because they try to keep things really simple which is great for beginners, but can be a little frustrating if you're trying to access a specific derivation path. Some wallets give you granular control and others don't. It's one of the reasons I usually prefer the more robust desktop versions of software applications. And fourth, 
Understand that in the derivation path, the very last number is the address index number. Some wallets, when they're recovering, don't check past the very first address. In other words, if the very first address generated in the wallet, address zero, has no Bitcoin associated with it, they stop right there and say the wallet has zero Bitcoin in it. This is what's called the gap limit. It's how many addresses the wallet checks before deciding you don't have any more funds. Something else to keep in mind is that most wallets search account number zero first, and if that has no funds in it, it assumes that the entire wallet is empty and stops the search right there. If there are Bitcoin funds stored in other accounts, you might need to tell the software where to search. Now let's talk about the mistakes people can make with this stuff. Mistake number one is not recording the derivation path that you're using. That's a big one. You set up your wallet, you record your seed phrase, five years later you, you try to recover it, and you have no idea what derivation path to use because the wallet says empty. Now you're playing guessing games and it is nerve wracking. Mistake number two is assuming that all wallets work the same way. They don't. A treasure might default to one path, a ledger might default to another path, and a cold card, something completely different. Don't assume, check. Mistake number three is using different derivation paths on different wallets with the same seed phrase, assuming that they're connected. I'll send Bitcoin to the Taproot wallet on this cold card, and I'll send Bitcoin to the native SegWit wallet on this Trezor, and they'll all go into the same wallet. <laughs> no, they don't. Those different derivation paths, native SegWit, Taproot, are completely different wallets. They're basically different apartments in the same building because you use the same seed phrase. You can access both of them with the same seed phrase. You just need to set both wallets to the same derivation path, the Trezor and the cold card, to the same exact derivation path. Or you could use wallet software that scans multiple derivation paths. But a lot of people don't realize this and think they've lost funds when they're just looking in the wrong place. Mistake four is not keeping it simple, stupid. I've heard stories of people who are new to Bitcoin who use different derivation paths for different purposes. I'm going to use legacy derivation path for my savings account, and I'm going to use Taproot for my spending account. And then six months later, they can't remember what Bitcoin is where. Please keep it simple when you're getting set up and started in Bitcoin. Pick one path, stick with it, and document it. And the final common mistake is thinking you need to understand all the details. You don't. You need to know two things. You need to know what derivation path your wallet is using, and you need to know how to change it if you need to recover somewhere else. That's it. You don't need to memorize BIP standards or understand cryptographic math. You just need to write down M slash 84 next to your seed phrase. Your seed phrase is the master key to your Bitcoin. The derivation path leads you to the specific room or apartment where your Bitcoin lives. Different type of Bitcoin addresses take you to different rooms. Legacy in M44, multi-sig in M48, nested segwit in M49, native segwit in M84, and taproot in M86. When you set up a wallet, write down which one you're using for yourself and for someone else who might need to recover your Bitcoin someday. When you recover a wallet, make sure you're using the same path. And if you see a zero balance, but you know you had Bitcoin in there, check the derivation path before you panic. Being a good steward of your Bitcoin means knowing how to reliably access it. Whether that's you recovering it five years from now, or your family covering it in 50 years after you're gone. Five minutes of knowledge now could save a lot of stress later, or even prevent your Bitcoin from being lost forever. If you found this review helpful, Hit that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you've got questions about derivation paths or wallet recovery, drop them in the comments below, please. And thank you guys all so much for the really supportive and nice comments. I really appreciate them. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that as well. Stay safe. Stay sovereign. I'll see you in the next video.